One of the other nice things about that moment's pause that you get when you think what you're going to do about the 20th is uh, you begin to remember people who have been on our stage and that you've lost touch with. And uh, I admit I'm guilty of that. And, uh, and so it, it brought me back to uh, a relationship I've had with Alex Tsiaris for about 100 years. Alex, come out here. He's a reprobate. Uh, he's, he's proud to say that he's been thrown out of all the best medical schools. <laughs> yeah, you see? And, and he kisses me at the top of my head. Big and, brain. Yeah. Bigger ego than even mine. <laughs> <laughs> So Alex lives in this uh, unusual world that is the intersection between art and science. And uh, I first became aware of him even before I met him because I saw these astonishing uh, layouts in, uh, what was it? Was it Life magazine all the way back? Yeah, of, of conception of, of, of a baby being nurtured in a womb, that kind of magic photography before people were aware that you could make that kind of magic photography. Uh, so I thought to hunt this guy down and uh, eventually met up with him and visited him at his offices, which he had created himself. He's the kind of guy who also builds his furniture and uh, puts up art exhibits and so on. So anyways, this is an elaborate uh, introduction to say I'm thrilled to have you back. It's been too long. Okay. And what he's going to talk about is the visual MD, which is his creation. The story of, sorry, 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 okay, the story of MD. And, and, all right, so this is Alex Tsiaris, Disrupting Health. Okay. Okay. So, I'm going to show you a first image there. Um, I seem to always get the station right after lunch so I can make people feel guilty about having eaten. <laughs> but um, one of the things that happened many years ago is a pharmaceutical executive uh, came up to me and said, we really need some help on telling a story about diabetes, diabetes type 2. He said, you know, 92% of diabetics, uh, type 2 diabetics, cannot even define to you their own disease which is an incredible number, because we're always talking about patient engagement. If a person is living in a black box, how can you possibly ever get them to understand what they must do as a next step? And I thought maybe it's because you know, the idea of enabling someone to understand the activities inside their body is simply a story, multiple little stories going on simultaneously inside your body. And unfortunately, maybe the biggest business in the world, healthcare, have the shittiest storytellers. And so I was thinking, Maybe one of the things that we have to do is just help these people basically tell the story. Um, I'm sorry. Can, can you, can, could you hear me? Yes, but I need a little better. OK. There we go. OK. Is that better? Yeah. All right, cool. OK. So I thought, OK, let's, let's see if we can actually move the dial. Let's, let's go back to our background and see if we can actually gather the information. So just to give you a little background on myself, um, I was offered a position as Associate Professor of Medicine and Chief of Scientific Visualization at the uh, Yale University in the Department of Surgery. And as a mathematician, my job was to write multidimensional algorithms for supercomputers to actually do virtual surgery in preparation for NASA, for the astronauts going into deep space flight. So we were scanning pretty much everything from, from the moment of conception until the advanced age you know, from the molecular to the gross anatomy. And before that, I was, I was a journalist at, at mostly at timing for 15 years. And then before that, I was a painter and a sculptor. And so one of the things that I thought is, that if I take my, the artistry and the storytelling and the technology and marry them into a beautiful story, could we actually reverse the slippage in relationship to people and their, and their behaviors? And we were a bit arrogant because the thing is that we thought we could actually really move the dial on this. And we did these beautiful stories, and I must admit, they were very impactful. We really got people to understand them. But still, what happened is that people went into slippage. Because it was a proxy story, it wasn't the story of me, or it wasn't the story of you, it was a story of a first cousin, a person similar to you, but not you. So I said, in order to change this, we really have to change the paradigm of how we actually impart information to people. I thought, how can I, there are billions of people out there, how can I actually tell each and every one of you the story of you? And I thought, 
I was looking out for other kinds of examples. I'm sitting here saying, well, Google Earth basically knows where you are, where you're eating, has actually information about you at a certain point in time. So I looked back at the history. I saw that actually Google started off as a company called Keynote. And really what they did is they took all the pictures from NASA from 1956 to the present. And ones that were analog, they digitized them. And then in the second part, they knew the longitudinal latitude studies of the Earth. They knew where Toronto was and where Athens was. And basically, all they had to do was write a content management system that bridged them. Google saw it at a TED conference and thought it was really beautiful, didn't know what they were going to do with it, but bought it. I thought, that's interesting. I said, you know, I have the equivalent of all those pictures of every part of the body through pathologies, through every stage. I have that. What is the equivalent of the human body's longitudinal latitude study? I think most people don't realize the fact that you're coded in a thing called HL7. HL7 is a health level seven. It's an international coding system that every time you go to the doctor, your medical records, hospitals, insurance companies basically code you. Your international classification of disease 10 uh, has 84,000 you know, conditions, 1,250 of them for just a broken femur. And so what happens is that they have uh, Rx Norma for the drugs, Low Inc for your lab reports. So basically, you can go anywhere in the world and you can take your, la your, your, your information with you and basically it can be read. The problem is they're hieroglyphics. You have no idea what they mean. So what we did is we said, can I turn those codes into a beautiful story? And that was the goal. What we would do is we'll take multi-platform, we'll build the biggest content management system, we'll build the largest library, we'll build a personal health record. Each platform will bridge until I can actually take every person in this room and actually turn you into the story of you as opposed to the statistics of you. So let me show you how we did this. So basically what happened is that in order to create platform one, which was a library, we had to digitize and create these huge visual visceral libraries. You have to have body locations, every aspect, from disorders, conditions, health and wellness. And in this disease state, basically in the detail of this information, we had to have, so if you take cancer, you have to have all the cancers. You have to have what cancer means, cancer prevention. You have to have the blood cancers. You have to actually create these huge libraries. You know, if you're talking about breast cancer, you have to be able to go into it and answer the principal questions that people have, like what you know, what is it? What is the overview? What are the signs and symptoms? Very simple, beautiful stories, sort of explaining to you in a very simplistic fashion exactly what is happening inside Early your body. Has been With this, we, were, we could basically now tell you signs, symptoms, diagnoses, prognosis, every aspect. But what we wanted to go even further, we wanted to say, okay, I then need to know other things about what are the lab reports? What are they telling about you know, breast cancer prevention? So we then built what they call the largest biomarker library. So we could take any kind of um, disease condition, whether you're talking about HERS2 or your BRCA gene. And so you know when you get your lab reports back and they are like hieroglyphics? Now what will happen is that we will read your record. And in essence, we will send you these stories. We turn you into thousands of little stories. We're going in the opposite direction of big data little data, little stories about what's going on inside my body. You will get pictures, you will get information that will just continue to guide you to the next stage of whatever may be happening inside your body. Every aspect will ex be explained to you so that you will never walk away saying, I don't get it, I don't understand it. You will always be able to understand what's happening inside your body. So as we said about diabetes, every aspect of diabetes now is preventing uh, pre-diabetes type one. We made it a kind of like a, a, a kind of a beautiful, you know, Netflix type of storyline. So that basically people can come in and explore until they find the kinds of information that they're looking for. We also realize the fact that it's very hard to understand the abnormal if you don't understand the normal. How do you get here from here? So what we did is we also uh, created a new coding system for ourselves that allows us to not only tell you about the pathology, but then as you start, start to try to understand what went wrong, we built this so that you can not only understand it, but if the doctor wants to explain to you what's happening, he can go to a gallery of information, pull up our interactive 3D information, call up your coronary arteries before it, and show you exactly what's going on inside your body. We wanted to make the content and the information visual and visceral. Every time we take a storyline, it's not enough to say, oh, I've got the content. It's like, what's it feel like to be a dyslexic? 
every aspect of this had to be sort of pushed to its absolute limit. And we're just talking about platform one. This is all aspects of what is going on inside your body. What happens to the beautiful jirai and sukai of your brain, of the melting of the brain that actually holds those beautiful memories and, and imagery in your mind, the melting of it. So all the hero images before we go on. But at the same time, people have other questions other than to the pathologies. Uh, my mother had Alzheimer's. My four brothers were taking, uh, my, my four brothers and I were taking care of my, brother, my mother. And the idea was, you know, we needed constant communications with each other to basically be able to sort of do group caregiving and understanding. My mother fell. How did we speak to her? How did, you know, how did we handle her finances? So rich, rich, rich libraries. Am I still? Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So that was platform. Okay. So we're going into platform two. As I mentioned to you, the idea of marrying the content management system to the longitude and latitude studies, we had to marry it to your HL7. So HL7, as you see here, these are the kinds of codes, CVX for your, for your vaccines, the, these are for your pathologies, these are your lab reports, and you can see how many. There are over 1,100,000 codes for you, 2,624 pages only of your pathologies. And the thing is, it's these, Codes are very important. My son just had a knee operation, you know, uh, ACL operation, and I looked at the code. I mean, I'm sure you guys never look at your ICD-10 codes. I looked at the code. He was having the operation on his left knee. It was his right knee. That he was, my, my wife and I were writing these big magic markers. This is where you cut. You know? <laughs> so it, and so every one of these assets, in order to match up against your record, has to be coded, in essence, so that I can read and send you relevant information about what's happening inside your body. Whether it's a virtual colonoscopy, all of your data can be stored in one place, one platform where you can manage yourself, your family, that will have all of the information about you that can be understood in relationship. So just to show you the metadata, you can see ICD-10 codes. So every time this thing gets coded, it has the ability to send you a beautiful picture, a beautiful story, about what's happening inside your body. Never to walk away saying, I do not understand. I do not have power over it. So that's platform two. You marry the second, the first platform, and you bridge it. So let's just say that this is a woman who is, let's take someone from preconception all the way up to the first um, you know, thousand days of their child's. Uh, we can guide you through that period of time. So the woman's going through an IVF program. But what happens if the woman is actually um, has migraines, or what happens, you know, and she wants to, and she's tracking herself. So she's looking at migraines, oh, bad spelling here, but migraine women, okay? So she actually calls up the information on migraines for women, and she posts it to her own personal story, where now it becomes a part of her digital diary, her timeline, where she is actually monitoring herself as she's going through this entire process. And as she has all the information about infant care, she's going backward in time, because basically as you start here, what's happening here is that she can now keep a personal record where she can share it. It's HIPAA compliant, it's GDPR compliant, so it's totally secure. But one of the things that we found is older people are absolutely paranoid about their medical records. They don't want anyone seeing them. Young people share everything. So, <laughs> so the thing is we have to actually make this so that if you wanted to share it, but it's completely controlled by the individual. If she wants to share it, she can share it. She can basically say, you know, feeling better, um, you know, and she can then basically post it. It becomes a part of her timeline. If she wants to go up and start to do longitudinal studies on her pain and saying, you know, uh, you know uh, this is uh, much, much better, um, she, can, she can come in and say, you know, head pain, she has the ability to track herself. She can add videos, she can add pictures, she can bring in images from ours, she can use our library, and any healthcare professional can now take this information and help manage with the user, where basically they can manage groups and manage uh, various kinds of communities. Because one of the things that we have realized is that our images are global. A fetus is a fetus, you know, a, you know the interior body of a heart. Uh, and, and the coding is, is global. Treatment is local. 
If you're in Toronto and you're a parent of a young type 1 diabetic, you want to find other parents of type 1 diabetics. You want to find who's the doctor you're going to. You need to be able to find out and reach groups by managing and creating groups where you can actually localize all of this information. You don't want some you know, large Greek person from New York saying this is the way you do it. No, you just want to be facilitated to basically have the tools to understand and then act on it. So what we wanted to do in all of these was build tools to facilitate your ability to extend your story and reach out to other people. With this, you also have dashboards. Dashboards where you get new information, you create the dashboard, you tell everybody whether you want to share it, you can take this information, and this is a kind of more of the mobile information. So this is platform three, it's your personal health record. And this allows you to go, so the moment the woman then becomes pregnant, she just starts through a continuity, one record from the moment of conception to advanced age, you can start right away. And then we send you, when we know where you are on your timeline, we can then start to send you valuable information. Now, yesterday people were you know, debating about the issue of you know, data, knowing too much data. You know, I'm, I'm in between. You, know, you can, you can you know, be offensive about that. But listen, the moment you go to your physicians, what's the very first thing they do with you? They take your history. It's your data. Without that, they have no idea. When my mother was in the hospital and she had high um, marks on an inflammatory marker and they didn't have her medical records, they didn't know whether it was a urinary tract infection or whether she had a, a cancer. And so if, without having that data, without having that history, when we have that data, we now can send you information on the timeline that can guide you building a baby. If you're pregnant, you want to know these things. This is wonderful that, that I can send you this information. What's happening inside your body? Isn't it beautiful that you can see and understand intimately what's happening, that the, the, the marvel, you know, the, the majesty of these body parts are being created inside you. But what happens in all of these people say, oh, there are already, you know, there are already apps and things like that for these kinds of things. Yeah, but the problem is you can't have too many spokes. People don't normally have just hypertension or they just have AFib or something. They, they normally have multiple problems. And if in the case of a woman going through nine months, what happens if she has a crisis? What happens if she has preeclampsia? You have to be there for the crisis as well. You have to be there for the multiple factors. So if something goes in, you have that information as well. The heroes of the NICU, what must you do? So I'll show you a, a case study example of how a woman could use this during her pregnancy. StoryMD is a platform that allows you to track, understand, and act on your health data. Let's see how one mother is using it as she experiences pregnancy for the first time. Jill is pregnant and expecting her first child. She's become a mobile heart, lung, blood, an immunological incubator as her body changes to nurture and protect her soon-to-be baby. She's indicated to StoryMD her date of conception, so the platform's pregnancy bot can provide her with weekly updates explaining and visualizing the marvel of her baby's development. For example, Jill learns of the astounding development in her baby's brain as he or she learns to hear, smell, taste, and swallow. Now, Pregnancy Bot notifies Jill of an upcoming set of tests, her second trimester screening, also known as a quad test. Having followed a link to the health library to learn more about the quad test, she finds out what her results could mean. After she receives her results, she can quickly and easily add them to her health journal. How did she get them? Her physician may have given her an electronic personal health record, called a CCD, or continuity of care document, and uploaded that file directly to StoryMD. Otherwise, she can upload her results manually, as we've seen her doing here. Her journal visualizes her results, giving her additional context into what each of those numbers means. Besides keeping track of all that data in one place, Jill can now securely share her experience with family, friends, and trusted healthcare providers, and receive feedback from her doctor right on her timeline, letting them participate in the beauty of her pregnancy.
Once the baby has arrived, she can even create an account for her with its own dashboard where she can manage upcoming tests and vaccinations and keep track of important health markers, reminders, and conversations with doctors. To begin using StoryMD to track, understand, and manage your health, go to StoryMD.com. So the craziness of this is that we are spending our entire lives cobbling our information together. A woman during her pregnancy will use five different places to research her pregnancy and four different places to store her data on average. The moment she gives birth, that record is worthless, and she has to now start to cobble one for herself postpartum and cobble one for her child. It is insane. You should have one record from the moment of conception until your advanced age. I was just a keynote speaker at a major insurance conference, and the chairman of the conference was just telling me, oh, Alexander, I was just doing a virtual colonoscopy, you know, I was in the Mayo Clinic getting an exam, but then I was playing a little golf in Florida, and I had a little heart episode. I had to get scanned, you know, uh, in Florida, but I live in New York City, and I was going to have my shoulder for a rotator cuff, and I, I just thought, you know, this is insane. I said, in one year, Alex, I said, your, your colon's in Minnesota, your heart's in Florida, and your shoulder's in New York. I mean, this is nuts. You should have one record that goes with you no matter where you are. And from that, the person can go into the postpartum era and manage their child, manage themselves, create a record for their child. The idea of this information, it is mobile, it is, and the, the beauty of it, we even do the entire family. <laughs> so with this, you can actually, every member of the family gets a record. And I, I'm very serious about this because the thing is that uh, these, this, this wonderful woman, Susan, and, and the golden doodle, Kukla, is my wife and my puppy. <laughs> and in essence, I've seen through the caring of my mother, through the caring of family members, the idea of a single, single record that explains you to you throughout your entire lifetime. So in summary, it's, a, it's, a, it's unusual that I'm in the disruptive air here because the thing is such a simple premise. You are not a statistic, you are a story. We take the libraries and the content manager and the personal health record and what we're building next is a practice management system so that any doctor, any healthcare provider, yoga instructor, nutritionist can take our tools and build a program for you that is customized to you because you already trust these people. So it is a simple premise. It is the story of you to enable you to understand and actually manage the trajectory of your well-being and those you love. Thank you. So, Alex, how do I get that? How, what, do I buy it in the store, or what, what do I We're going to be distributing through Zoomers. Really? <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, how, how is your plan? How do you Right project? now, the, the, all the libraries are totally open to anyone for free, and basically people in the fall will be able to sign up. But through certain distribution plans, they will be optimized plans through programs like Zoomers or others. So, for example, if someone has breast cancer or someone has migraines, there'll be special programs to bring them up. It's very interesting. Wellness people are very top-down. When people have conditions, they're very bottom-up. So you have to guide them through those kinds of narrow focuses into the ecosystem. And then once they get control of themselves, they are inspired to continue doing it. I'm still trying to follow the money, Alex. Those images are exquisite. <laughs> yeah. They've taken a long, long time to create. Writing all that stuff out, I don't know how many platoons of people you have doing all of this. Yeah. How does it get from there into the individual accounts of all these people? Here? The, the basic account will be, it's a t typical SaaS model, which is basically a software as a service. You can get into the basic model, but then if you want the premium services, or some people will actually start to upload a tremendous amount of data and videos and things, they will pay an extra fee for that. At the same time, um, one of the arguments yesterday is the argument about the data. Um, but of course, we will sell the data because the data has a value, but because you are HIPAA and GDPR compliant, you have to be totally transparent, and though even HIPAA and GDPR allows the data to be sold only as a population study, never as an individual. Mm -hmm. But the data is really where the value is. Because in essence, if you can't see, this will be the only, so here is a very interesting part of what we're doing. There are two trillion dollar industries, the clinical, hospitals, doctors, and the wellness world. They're not married. 
They're working independently. Mm -hmm. This will be the only place that you will actually see behavior, how it affects the body. And as wearables come out more and more, you will be able to see exactly what's going on inside your body dynamically. That data is something that you can act on. And that data will be hugely valuable to your physician and to the well-being. Mm -hmm. So that kind of information, the data is going to be valuable to the government. And as long as we don't become Facebook and are abusive of it, we can actually use it in a positive way. I know that the idea of a single electronic medical record is a holy grail that uh, this province, among others, has been in pursuit for, I don't know, over a decade. There was a notional scandal some time back. Over a billion dollars had been spent, and still they couldn't get their arms around it. I spent two million dollars to build that, which is four people. And much more exquisite than, yeah. yeah, the other thing is just a filing cabinet in which you get all of those bits and pieces in one place. Yeah. Uh, you're a whole other step forward and above. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do something <laughs> together. All right. All right. <laughs> On that, let's yeah. do something.